Hydrogen. It's the first element in the periodic table and the lightest. It's the most common substance in the universe. On Earth, it's found in water and organic compounds such as methane. It can be stored as a liquid or a gas. Most important, hydrogen is a massive source of energy. Liquid hydrogen rocket fuel blasts astronauts into space. Hydrogen fuel cells power cars, trucks, trams, even ships. But its mainstream use is very much in the future. For now, its key purpose is in industrial production, for petrochemical refining, and to make ammonia, think fertilisers and explosives. Hydrogen is stored energy. So it's much like a battery. It's a chemical battery, but it's a battery that you can move around. It's a battery you can export. It's a battery that you can utilise anywhere from your home gas range right the way through to a, to a large-scale power station. Hydrogen might only have one atom and is invisible to the eye, but it has three names, green, grey and blue. Grey hydrogen is the most common form of hydrogen. It's created by using fossil fuels. Typically, methane is reacted with steam or coal is reacted with oxygen, with both reactions forming hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Right now, it's the cheapest source of hydrogen but it's not desirable in a clean energy world. The International Energy Agency says production of grey hydrogen produces as much carbon dioxide as Indonesia and the UK combined. Blue hydrogen also uses fossil fuels, but the carbon dioxide emissions are extracted and placed into carbon capture and storage. It's not as cheap as grey hydrogen, but with fewer emissions. Green hydrogen is made with electrolysis, splitting water atoms into hydrogen and oxygen, with the electricity produced by renewable energy sources such as wind and solar. It can be expensive to make hydrogen. Uh, at the moment, fossil fuel-derived hydrogen is the cheapest way to do it. So that's what we're using in industry at the moment, using natural gas. Um, so they can do that for under sort of $2 a kilo. When you're looking at adding carbon capture and storage on, or if you're going to do a fully zero emission or green hydrogen route, costs are, um, it, it varies, but they're, they're more than that, sort of two to three times the cost um, of that at the moment. One ambitious use of hydrogen is to release energy and create heat, to make steam and turn the turbines in Australia's ageing coal-fired power stations. Star Scientific's facility here on the central coast is 8,000 square metres. It designs, tests and builds products like the heat exchanger behind me, which uses hydrogen to create steam. Star's Hero Catalyst reacts with hydrogen and oxygen to create heat. The process takes about a minute or so, with the catalyst safely reaching temperatures of 700 degrees Celsius. The Philippines government has expressed interest in HERO, recently signing an MOU with Star Scientific to study retrofitting existing coal-fired power plants with the technology. Well, HERO won't be sold, so we will be providing heat as a service, which is becoming the trend around the world with many, many, many things. Uh, so we will be providing the HERO units, but we'll own those HERO units, and we will provide heat as a service. But for mainstream use, the goal is to replace fossil fuels and to transform our roads and transport systems. Fuel cells are the common way to turn hydrogen into electricity, the local arm of the Hyundai using the technology in its fleet of hydrogen vehicles. Yeah, the hydrogen-powered vehicles we've got here today have got six moving parts in total and basically we take hydrogen gas that's made from uh, water renewable energy preferably it goes into the fuel cell stack, it's converted back into water, which comes out the exhaust, and it um, also converts into electricity, which powers the vehicle. So they're a zero emission vehicle that actually purifies the air and, and creates water as they drive. Filling up a hydrogen car is pretty much like a normal petrol vehicle. You just pop the fuel filler cap, take off this little safety cover here, and then get your hydrogen gas. This simply plugs in, and away you go. It takes about three minutes to fill up a tank. And the range on these cars is 666 kilometres. The problem for all types of hydrogen is that it accounts for just 6% of global natural gas use. And green hydrogen is about 0.3%. To bring down prices and to make it viable, more needs to be produced. But with the government giving out $70 million of incentives and with local energy giants including Corgas, Woodside, BHP, 
Origin, Santos and Fortescue already working in the space, a new hydrogen energy industry seems to be just a matter of time.